you got nothing. Globe belief is a religion until you come up with one scientific proof and you're not no. going to be able to. No, no, I, you know, I don't know. To me, religion is tied into spirituality. Yeah, and beliefs uh, beyond religion, well, whether it, you know, globe, which, globe by the way, is faith. Faith is belief no. in something that you can't prove. Okay. So right. you have faith in the religion of the globe, but you can't prove no. it. You have no proof. But no. Oh, well, not, not after this conversation. It's, it's like okay that's what i'm saying it's like that's that i i mean i've got smoke coming out of my ears because when someone's in a cult okay. and you tell them they're in yes. a cult what do they say they say no 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 i'm not well Please. you know what because Marlene, you're in a cult you, no This is Marlene with Stories of the Supernatural. How's everybody doing? Good, I hope. I'm doing good myself. And today I have a special guest and uh, his name is Flat Earth Dave. And let me tell you a little bit about him before we get going. I mean, though I'm sure some of you may have uh, already heard of him before now. Uh, he hails from the East Coast of the United States where he was born and raised uh, he began his flat earth journey when he left his very lucrative corporate job and started his own company. As a hobby, he hosted a conspiracy comedy show at uh, New York City Comedy Club for three years. After many fans urged that he look at what he considered to be a ridiculous notion called flat earth, he sought out to disprove this conspiracy and put it to bed once and for all. It was then that he discovered flat earth was in fact the true earth and hasn't looked back. He is now on a mission to wake up the world to flat earth because it is the most important topic today, especially in light of today's current political and social climate. All right. And uh, of course, at the, I'll remind you guys, well, you know, as far as for the podcast listeners, for his links and there'll be credits uh, in, the, in the links and the credits of the show. But I, I know your bio is very short, Dave. Yes. But how did you hear about it to begin with? How do I hear about theory? flat earth? Yeah. Yeah. Who, so, told, who told you about it? Just real quick. My bio, my, uh, my links are easy. Flatearthdave.com. Everything's there. Ah. Okay. Flatearthdave.com. Okay, so I was doing a, um, a conspiracy analyst show, right? I, I, I hate the, the term conspiracy theorist because we're not conspiracy theorists. We're conspiracy analysts. You want conspiracy theory, turn on the news and they'll mm -hmm. tell you stuff that has no basis to it. Those are called okay. conspiracy theories. So okay. um, we were looking into all of the big events that happened, you know, New York and, you know, Boston and everything else. And uh, people started sending me in the, in the third year said, Hey, Dave, have you looked into flat earth? And when I first, the first email I got, I was like, Oh, that's funny. Like, I like, I don't think it's really a funny joke, but he's trying to be funny. And then they kept coming, okay. they kept coming more and more and more. And Dave, just watch this two minute video. And I wouldn't do it. I'm like, I, I, listen, I'm willing to look at anything. You, you tell me you got a, a video, of Bigfoot. Let me see it. Let me look at it. You say that you saw mm -hmm. a UFO and you saw a gray being. Let me see it. Show me. Show me what you got. Let me analyze it. Flat Earth, get out of here. Dumbest thing ever. Okay? Of course we live on a globe. What about all the photos from Earth? What about sunsets? What about seasons? What about ships over the horizon? All pre-programmed nonsense, which I find out later. And so I refuse. And then my good friend, Sophia Smallstorm, I was having a discussion with her about the deception in the world was just killing me. I was like, there's so much deception. And she goes, oh, Dave, it's worse than, worse than that. I think the earth might be flat. And I, I'm like, are you kidding me? I literally just finished banning a whole bunch of people from ever commenting on our podcast again for, for, for harassing me to look into flat earth. So she sent me a couple of videos, Mark Sargent's clues, Eric DeBay's uh, 200 proofs. And I watched them reluctantly with a bad attitude. I'm like, I'm going to disprove flat earth. I'm going to prove the globe. And okay. that's how you become a flat earther. The only people that cling onto the globe are the ones that refuse to look at the information. The ones that go, oh, I'm going to look, I'm going to Google. Is the earth flat? Top 10 reasons why it's not flat. Boats over the horizon. Let me ask you something, but yeah. I guess what I'm saying is, you know, everybody hears, you know, Galileo and how, you know, whatever. But, and then you, you know, of course, as time goes by and it was, oh, everybody thought or knew or it was taught, how's that? That the earth was round, it was a sphere. But in, I'm talking recently, when I say recent history, who was the proponent that decided to sacrilege, 
say that it was flat. Was there somebody that, or a triggering event, somebody in recent history that basically was going, flying in the face of what was considered yeah. science? So history is a lie um, agreed upon by the victors, mm -hmm. by the controllers of our world. Absolutely. And, yes. and people say, well, we've known for 2,000 years, the Greeks figured it out. Aristophanes with his sticks and shadows. We can look at that and show you how one, it doesn't prove the earth is a globe. It actually, it proves the earth is flat and they've just twisted it. And the other is it's a made up story. Aristophanes never did that experiment. It's all it's all a joke. Right. You know, so um, in 2020, in February, I was interviewing this woman, Ruth, 102 years old, mm -hmm. she's sharp as a tack about the world's fairs, which is a whole nother rabbit hole. You got to go down sometime. And uh, I said to her off the cuff, never mentioning flat earth. I said, what did they teach you in, in uh, elementary school? Because she told she knew the name of her school, her teacher, everything. She had perfect memory. Like I can barely remember my teachers. And um, she said that they taught me the earth was flat. This was in the mid in the 1920s. OK, they taught her okay. that the earth was flat. In public school wow. here in the USA, OK, and then we find out that, you know, like the Gleason's map, um, which is the, the most accepted flat earth map, was in every library, in every school, in every encyclopedia up into the 1950s. When I told her, she broke down crying. She was like, oh, my God, I've always known it. I've always known it. You know, this is, okay. uh, is amazing. Um, so when um, well, we found out in the 1950s, they were teaching flat earth and globe earth in American public schools. OK, met a woman from Croatia she said in the 1930s and 40s, they were only teaching flat earth. OK, so okay. this is a relatively new thing. It's a made they, they they've inserted stuff into the Rockefeller textbooks that they want you to memorize and regurgitate. And if you do a good job, mm -hmm. you can become a teacher and you can teach it to the next generation. So teachers aren't lying. Right, sure. They're just regurgitators of Rockefeller funded information. OK, now let me ask why. We, Why I, would, you know, I was just, I, I, I'm reading your mind because I can read everyone's mind. I want to say, <laughs> what difference does it make? I still have to go to work on Monday. What does lying about the shape of the earth? What, what, how does right. that affect anything? Okay. And I, I'll, we'll address it now. But the thing is, first, you got to look at the evidence. Like you walk into a room and there's okay. dead people everywhere, blood all over the place. You don't go, Why? I don't believe it. Why? You look at the evidence. You go, There's dead people here. Okay. Something killed them. OK, all right. So, okay. And, then, and then you can find out the motives. So we're going to look at all the dead people through the, the next hour. But um, OK. And but the reason why is because it's a prison for your mind. What do I what do I mean by that? OK, so it's a prison for all your right. mind. If you so you're you understand that your thoughts create your reality. Everything you have in your life is because of the way that you think. Right. Sure. All right. And so. Yes. Um, yeah, yeah. So so. If they can cut your mind off, right? Here, here's um, Mark Sargent always says this. You put a lion in a quarter acre fenced in area, he's going to pace that fence all day. He wants to get over that fence, right? You know, a wild animal. Mm -hmm. but you put him in a 500 acre safari park. When he gets to the fence, he's going to go, ah, he's going to turn around, right around and not worry about it because he's got plenty. Put a human in a 5,000 mile, 50,000 mile fenced in area. They just want to go to the other side of the fence. OK, so how can you imprison somebody? And this is how they did it. OK, so here's a map of the world. Imagine if we just cut out America, a little bit of South America. You got Mexico in there. We erase okay. we erase the rest of the map and we wrap it around a sphere and we teach kids. This is the whole world. This is all there is. Okay. And no one's allowed to explore this white dot down here. OK, which is really okay. the edge. All right. So imagine mm -hmm. the world is a whole bunch of ponds, the world pond. We live in a pond, right? And there's mm -hmm. other ponds, pieces of the plane. We'll call them planets, right? And we live right okay. here. This is our whole world. Here it is, America, South America. You see it? They cut it out. Right. They wrap it around a sphere. And they say, this is all there is. There's nothing else. And you're not allowed to okay. explore south. So what does that do? That puts you in a, in a place where your mind is in a prison. You can never expand your thoughts. You believe that we're running out of food, we're running out of land, uh, that this is all that there is, that, you know, that governments are have authority over you, that you have no rights. Right. This is right. This is how they do it. And once you understand that you don't live um, on this ball, flying an insignificant speck flying through space, you realize that you're at the center of creation. Once you realize you're at the center of creation and that the world is intelligently designed, not a made up Big Bang by a Jesuit priest, OK, who made it up. Okay. 
right? Once you understand that you're at the center, then you take your power back. And guess what? If we take our power back, realize that no government, mind control, govern the mind, government, no one has control over you, then they lose power. Right. So it's all oh, sure. about controlling the slaves. We are slaves in their fiat-based currency money system, which is all fake, right? We're trapped on right. their globe when all the presidents and all the world officials, they're all going to Antarctica on really weird times, right? So let me, yeah, I know, I know. Everybody says like, what, what's up there? It's Or, or down there, whatever. Out, it's there, just ice and snow, out so there, out there, Antarctica yeah, is out there. Antarctica is south. I know, point, I'm sorry, point, I'm sure. any, any direction, every direction you point is actually south. So, Every well, I was going to ask you, if you go by what you just showed me, yep. that in other words, we were taught it's a sphere, but basically it's this. So yep. what you're saying is if we went beyond the edges of what we think is our spherical world, it keeps going, is what you're saying. There's more land out there. There's more space out there. Well, here's the thing. We keep traveling. Here, here's the thing. To prove the shape of the earth, we do not need to go beyond where they won't let us go, which is 60 degrees south. We do not need okay. to pay $50,000 to go to Antarctica for three days where they mm -hmm. don't let us explore anyway. Um, right. But the amount of evidence, the amount of book, the amount of history, the amount, uh, you know, the amount of evidence that there is more land, more civilizations beyond is okay. overwhelming in my book. book. But we don't need to leave our own town to prove that the earth is flat. Go to water, large bodies of water at rest, lay flat, okay. you know, on a ball mm -hmm. 24,901 miles around. We could only see three miles before the earth drops six feet. So I'm standing there six feet tall, looking at the edge of the water. I shouldn't be able to see the surface of the water beyond three miles, according to globe math, right? Do right. Math, you'll understand that that's, a, that's right. what it dictates. But I could see the surface of the water for dozens of miles, okay? Okay, I, I, I could see what it. you mean. Yeah. So, so we can see too far. I mean, there's so many things. But if you want to talk about um, what's going on beyond Antarctica, that's one of my favorite things to talk about. So let me tell you okay. a, a quick little story about what happened, okay? So there's this mm -hmm. map. This is a map um, from, uh, where is it? There we go. So this map, this was a map that was found in a Buddhist temple like right. centuries old. It was published in a, a Hawaiian magazine, I believe in 1910, a Hawaiian newspaper. And it shows here we are, South America, North America, right? You got Africa, um, Australia, and mm -hmm. all of these other continents out here, like 30, 40 continents out here. What is that about? Okay. Okay. And then you know, you Google this, and like Google's like, oh, it's a it's a cartoon, it's an artist rendering, right? They're, they're gonna say whatever. Uh, to me, I believe it's a a true map, okay? Um, or okay. or close approximate proxim proximally, all right. So then Somebody was looking at, um, you, you can track um, all the cargo ships in the world and they're all over here. You click on any one of them and uh, it'll tell mm -hmm. you all the information about the ship, how big it is, captain, where it's going, you know, what it's got, where it left, where, you know, dates. It gives you everything, it tells you everything it's doing. But they noticed a ship okay. several hundred miles inside of the shoreline of Antarctica. I actually got an email from somebody today that found another ship almost 800 miles inside of okay. the shoreline of Antarctica. How did it get there? Marlene, how did a ship get 800 miles? And so there's this is this is no tributary, nothing like an inland river, nothing. This is Earth. I mean, I mean, Earth, like no inside. land. They have problem getting to Antarctica because of the ice and the water. Okay, right. you know, exactly. Sure, 800 yeah. miles, right? And there was a, there was several of them, a line of them. Like, so what's going on there? So they click on one of the ships, and it had very little information. Didn't tell you who the captain was. Didn't tell you anything. It just said it was from the island or from the nation of Kiribati. Have you ever had a vacation to Kiribati, Marlene? Never heard, never heard of never it. Never heard of it. Okay. So let's check this out. Where's Kiribati? It's so small. I had to put a pin on it. Okay. Where is it? It is. There it is. Okay. It's in the middle of the Indian Ocean. In the middle. It's on the date line, okay. which we're going to get to in a second. Okay. You zoom okay. in on this thing. And it's friggin' a sandbar, okay? Nobody lives over here. Okay. There's just, it's just part of it is inhabited, okay? And they got a, a ship 580 meters long, 80 meters wide. It's a gigantic ship. It's, it's, on, it's huge. And, um, and right. what's it doing registered here? And what's it doing in, in an impossible place in Antarctica? And then meanwhile, right. like the United States, China, um, other nations, they're all saying Kiribati is a very important trade route. Wait a minute. Why does a ship need to stop at Kiribati? What are they picking up? Sand? Okay. 
What are, what are they picking exactly. up? Exactly. Where are they getting fuel? There's no pineapples. There's not even enough land to grow pineapples. Okay. Okay. So, and China gave them ten billion dollars, an important trade route. What could that mean? Ten billion dollars. Ten billion dollars. A lot of money. Right? Ten billion dollars. Wait, one other thing. They have a there's a hotel on on Karabati called the Captain Cook Hotel. You know about Captain Cook? Captain Cook, yes, of course. One, he tried to sail around Antarctica, which is like 11 to 12, 13,000 miles yes. around. Max. Yes. It took him three and a half years, he went over 68,000 miles. 68,000 miles when the equator is only 24,000 miles. Yeah, it's like how many times? How, how, <laughs> how much more evidence do you need that we don't live on a globe? Okay. I've never heard of that about Cook's uh, yeah. thing. I'd never heard about that mileage. Yeah. That's incredible. Oh, 68,000. So my contention is what if, Karabati is right about here. There is a trade mm -hmm. route out here to another world, another, other lands, other civilizations. Right? Imagine if you lived in America your whole life and they, no one invented a boat or an right. airplane yet. And then all of a sudden a boat was invented and you could go and all of a sudden you get to China. Okay. Those are extraterrestrials because right. they come from extra territory that you didn't know about extra Terra. Well, yeah, yeah. You could look okay. at it that way. Sure. So, so, <laughs> yeah. so what if this is a trade route? What if they're getting weapons or technology, computer chips or tuna fish? I, don't, I go out and order tuna sushi all the time. Where's it all coming from? I don't know. Everyone's eating tuna all the time. Where's it coming from? Maybe it's coming from out here. Okay. Maybe they're trading okay. humans. Maybe the, the, the whole thing with, uh, with, um, with the, the President Rock, was it not Rockefeller, um, Truman, where he made some a, a deal to trade you know, humans for experimentation for Whatever. Right, right, right. Alien. Maybe, maybe that was had some truth to it. Maybe it was just a, a treaty with another nation. Okay. Another another okay. civilization. Okay. I'm not saying this is true. Uh, no, 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 no. I know, I know what you're I, saying I'm, is without I'm, no, without having visited it, it's like yeah. And there's so you you have to think what what would be the motivation for, like you said, that loan from the Chinese government for this little right. speck of land right. out in the middle of the Indian Ocean. That's a lot of money. And, and so, so we have our globe earth, right? And you have the North pole and the South pole, and then you draw 24 lines equally spaced around. Those are all the time zones, right? So as you spin, you know, you all right, the exactly. move, move through the noon. Okay. Yeah. Well, there's one time zone that is really weird. You can't really, you see it over here. Look at this one. It zigzags. Okay. Okay. Well, well, why wouldn't they all be exact? Why wouldn't they all be exact? If the earth was a globe, like they tell us, it would all be exact, right? So here's a zoom in on uh, the one that's uh, the most mm -hmm. weird. This is a time zone. What okay. what is this? You know what this is? You know what here? You know right. what this red pin is? That's Karabati. No. Really? You know what that means? Because I don't. Okay, it's just in a uh, very. That's a weird. I'm just saying, it's like it does like this little detour kind of deal. The most important trade route. China and the United States, two of the biggest, most powerful countries in the world, mm -hmm. are saying this little sandbar with these sand people is an important trade route. And then they got ships at a Captain Cook Hotel that are going to impossible places inside of the land of Antarctica. Okay. There's too many, too many things going on right there for me to say nothing's going on here. Nothing. Okay. Let, let me ask you something, Dave. Then what do you think? Say, let's say we look up in the sky and we see the moon, which is spherical. Is that real? I mean, it looks spherical, doesn't it? Yeah. Do you think the moon is spherical? Let me ask a question. I think the moon is spherical. Okay. I'm looking at the lights of my ceiling and they're spherical too. Am I standing on a spherical floor? No. How, how come the lights in my ceiling are spherical? Well, we're talking about the, the the size comparison of one to the other. Well, wait, what what? How big is the moon? To me, it looks like it's the size of a basketball. Yeah, depends. Uh, yeah, waxing waning or where oh. where you're on the Earth. But I know I, I understand what you mean as yeah. far as the size of it. Yeah, you don't know the size. So, for example, I got four moons right here. Okay. Okay. Are they all the same size? Mm, not really. A little bit. Well, they're, really. they're close, but like this one yeah. could be a lot closer and smaller, and this one could be a lot farther and bigger. You would never know, right? right. You wouldn't know mm -hmm. until um, the hand grabs it. Are they all spheres? Yes. Okay. So here's the first one. It's a half a sphere. Well, it's hard to tell because it was turned around. How about this one? This one, okay. that's definitely a sphere, right? That was a sphere? Well, 
You, it looks like it. Yeah, it's flat. Okay. How about that? Is that a sphere? Okay. Yep, looks like it. It does, doesn't it? Well, I can have my bowl of cereal on that sucker. Okay. You know, I'm starting to feel like I'm in the Truman Show. Well, Stop here's that. the thing. <laughs> unless you can touch it, unless you can measure it, unless you can right. uh, you know, know the distance, know the size, you can't say anything about it. Okay. Everything, right. everything looks like a, a sphere. Okay. It looks like a sphere. For okay. example, see this? This could be the sun. It could be the moon. Is it spherical? Yes. It looks that way. It looks, it looks spherical, yeah. right? Yes. Did you know everything goes into the vanishing point and in the distance, I don't care what shape it is. It's a sphere. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sure. But let me, let me, yeah. let me fast forward. This is actually a train coming towards you. Okay. Well, the lights are around on the train, but it's not really. Right. Look. Yeah, exactly. But that it's looks just... like a sphere. So maybe the moon is, yeah. is this, maybe the moon is the, is the face of a train. Okay. It's not, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is mm -hmm. you can't say anything about it. Okay. You can't say anything okay. until you can touch it or measure it, right? So do you mean then that when we look at the sky, let's say, we, well, obviously the moon, we see it because it's very close to us, supposedly. But now, it's a but quarter you see of all these a million stars. miles away. A quarter of a million miles away. Do you know what the inverse square law of light is? No. So the inverse square law of light says every time you double the distance to a light, it's one quarter mm -hmm. of the brightness. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. Get a flashlight, hold it right in front of your eye. It's like, ah, then move it a foot away. It's not bad. Move it two feet away. It's, well, much easier. Move it four feet right. away. Forget it. It's beautiful, right? It, it's getting right. dimmer, and dimmer and dimmer. Okay. So for us to see the moon at the brightness that we see it, if you went halfway to the moon, it would be four okay. times brighter. Halfway again, four times that, 16. Half of okay. that, 64 times brighter. And by the time you got to 100 miles from the moon, it would be 20, it'd be 60 times brighter than the sun. Unimaginable. You can't imagine what twice the brightness of the sun is, right? Right. Right. You, you oh. can't. So when you no, walk, it would be, it would be for us. If you go by sunlight or daylight, it would be right. pretty hot. It would be like, uh, right. it would be, it would, it, you'd vaporize. <laughs> so yeah, exactly. When we look at the moon, it's lit all the way across edge to edge. When you put a, a single source light, on a ball, you see the hot spot from my ring ring light right here. Okay. Sure. So you would see a hot spot from a light and then it would dim out, right? When's the last time you saw a dusty, dirty rock reflect light a quarter of a million miles where it can cast a shadow or you can read a book by it? The answer is this is scientifically no. impossible. Does this look like it's a quarter of a million miles away? Does it look like it's right near the clouds? No, it looks pretty, pretty close. It looks oh. pretty, pretty close, right? Let's look. Well, yeah, as far as the, the ref if you look at the reflection, as yeah. far as. So here's here's the, the, the moon. This is the moon. And it's lighting up this cloud. Why isn't it lighting up this cloud? It's a quarter of a million miles away. What difference does, does, a, does that little dif difference make? This is telling you that this light that we see is way closer mm -hmm. than they're telling us. Okay. I don't think the moon or the sun saying. that we see um, is a physical moon or sun. Okay. I think it's an apparent, okay. uh, apparent moon or sun. Let me show you what I mean by that. Why, why do you, but obviously we must have some type of sunlight or something producing sunlight when warm. Oh, oh absolutely. Um, I, when you take a, um, you take the sun and you um, take a magnifying glass and you make that little hot spot where you used to, kids used to burn ants. Okay. Right. Um, look at, do that with a flash, with a magnifying glass. It looks like a little sun. Now lift that up in the air and that spot is there, but it's in the air somewhere. Move your hand around. You'll find it. You're like, Oh, there it is. Right. And you know, put a piece of paper on there. It, it literally looks like the sun and it's hot. Like the sun. I think that the sun right. that we see is something like that. So here's a little experiment I did. I got a square flashlight. Looks round. Okay. It's on the other side, 10 feet on the other side of this. And we're looking at this. This is a sheet hanging in the room. And I got page over to my left and I say, Hey, where okay. do you see the, where do you see the sun, right? I'm over here. And she goes, well, I see it right there. That's from her point of view. So she sees right. it like X on the sheet. She sees it over here while I'm seeing it over there. At the same time, okay. we're both seeing the same thing at the same time in two different places. How's that okay. possible? Okay, this is how it's possible. So I think that the sun and the moon that we see are within or above what we call the firmament or our, our personal atmospheric dome of vision. All of okay. this stuff, is, is um, I have videos on my channel, D-I-T-R-H. That's my YouTube, mm -hmm. deep inside the rabbit hole. Um, 
and you have to look at this stuff to see the experiments. See how we have, you know, even Globers admit that we see in this uh, azimuthal grid of vision or this personal atmospheric dome. And that's how we see. We can only see a certain distance in all directions. And if you connect all those points, it makes a dome of vision. And that's where all the lights in the sky appear. The stars, the sun, and okay. the moon. They appear on our dome of vision. So here's the other thing. Globers love to look up at the sky to figure out the shape of the floor. That's because that's all they have because we can't go up there. We, we can only speculate. Well, the star, you can't see the North Star from, from, from the South. Nobody can see the North Star. That proves the Earth is a, a globe. No, it proves perspective, okay? You can't right. see a street light five miles down the road because it merges with the horizon, okay? Right. It, merges. it just merges. You have to understand perspective. And we have, when you're standing on the Terra, the Earth, and you mm -hmm. have a celestial light, the sun or the moon or a star, then you have the atmospheric layer in the middle, and all of that goes together and creates what I call a horizontal eye zone. Okay. The horizon. So let me ask you, if this, these, these, these continents, if you want to call them, that are off, what they're only accessible via waterways? In other words, you have to sail on it, or is there any landmass that you've ever heard of? We don't know. We're not allowed. I mean, to that you could travel. Like, you remember how they said that there was a landmass between what Siberia and North America at one point that you basically humans could walk? Have you ever heard? Or the only way to get to one of these places is on a ship? Either a ship or some sort of aircraft, or maybe there's tunnels, right. maybe there's, there's trains. But no, 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 like no migration. Like, hey, we're going to, we're going to trek out there. No. Yeah, you know, you're not allowed to go beyond. And I'm just saying because it, it it makes it more plausible, as in why it would be so difficult to find them. You know that well, unless you well, had. It, here's the thing. This is my app, the Flat Earth Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app. I'm going into the images section. I just loaded it, so it's got to take a okay. second to load. And the, okay. you know about the Antarctic Treaty? No. So the Antarctic Treaty back in the 1950s, Admiral Byrd uh, started, um, you know, uh, Operation High Jump. High Jump, interesting. And he said there's more land beyond the South Pole, bigger than the United States, that no human has ever set eyes upon that's filled with resources, coal, uranium, natural gas, everything we need, okay. oil. Um, and then, you know, in a time when we're in wars for land and resources, every nation in the world agrees nobody can go there. Why? Yeah. Good question. Why? The, the whole world can agree on two things. One, Nobody can go to Antarctica, and two, everybody needs the thing stuck in their arm. Okay, everyone needs to be a human pincushion. Exactly. Right? Exactly, and that's so, it. that's a, that's two good questions as to why. Yeah, both of them. So, so the Antarctic Treaty um, what went into effect in 1959 or 19, 1959. Yeah, 1959. Um, and if you try to go to Antarctica, you will be stopped. Right there, they have. Um, you know, some fishermen tried to go there, went, went too far, and a destroyer literally intercepted them, turned them around. People have gotten permission from their countries to go. They get stopped. They get turned around. They get sent home. And then when I was going to ask you, is this like multinational? Oh, yeah. Or, or... Uh, immediately, 12 of the largest countries signed on to it. And now almost every country in the world has signed on to it, except, uh, you know, a few um, outliers. But okay, remember the Falkland War? Yes, of course. Right. What was that about? Falkland War, this little puppy right here. That was a weird little war. Yeah, it's because, like, because now there's a military base there. Military base, military really? base. Military. On all of these islands, all of these spaces all the way around, equally spaced around the world. Interesting. Equally spaced. Not, and in right. between these vast distances, this is a vast distance, you know, thousands of miles, um, uh -huh. there's, there's buoys. There's a, there's a grid of radar buoys, right? So you okay. cannot get beyond... 60 degrees south, right? 60 degrees south is like this pink line right here. You're still so far okay. from Antarctica, you can't even see it, right? And if okay. you cross that line, you will be stopped and you will be turned around. But they're like, oh, you can go with the right, <laughs> the right permits or, and stuff, nonsense. On the app, in the frequently asked questions section, um, mm -hmm. if you go to, to um, Antarctica and the 24-hour sun, there's um, videos about the Antarctic Treaty, where we've done the work for you. We'll show you that it'll okay. cost you hundreds of thousands of dollars to apply. You'll get denied and they'll keep your uh, money. So let me ask you the gist of the theory. I mean, of the treaty was 
nobody allowed up there? Is that basically the the, the gist of the, of the agreement? treaty? Was two things: we must protect the penguins and the ice. <laughs> Funny, isn't it? From what? Who knows <laughs> at this point? <laughs> it's the only pristine place left on Earth, and we have to preserve it. Okay? I don't even know if there are penguins in Antarctica, except ones that they brought there, like a zoo. So when you go to, you know, when you take a trip from Santiago yeah. to Deception Island, they take you to a friggin' island called Deception Island right next to Rothschild Island. Right. They show you some penguins. I think that they brought the penguins there. Maybe. Who knows? Right? right. Yeah. The whole like, story yeah. of the, like like the, the optics. Penguins freezing their butts off and stuff. It's all nonsense, right? It's all absolute and total nonsense. No, seriously. And the reason why I'm saying is normally for all these nations, especially powerful ones, to agree to a treaty, there's usually something important, very important, you would think. Longest standing is... treaty in history, and it can't even be questioned until the year 2041. Ah, and oh, really? Don't you think ExxonMobil was... would be like, you know, taking out full page ads in the New York Times going, you know, let yeah. us go to Antarctica. There's nobody there. There's no animals there. There's no people. There's no right. forest. There's no nothing. There's just fuel for you that we can get cheap. And no, nothing. Right. no one, no one says boo. No one says boo about in, Antarctica, right? You're not allowed yeah. to talk about it. Okay. In other words, where, where, where are all the lobbyists from these petroleum companies? The answer is the path? if we uh -huh. went to Antarctica, we would find out we don't live on a globe and that would make, then we'd all of a sudden see the fence that's been put around us and everybody would go, I want to go to the other side. In the app, on the Flatter Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app found on flatterthave.com, if you go to the book section, I highly, highly recommend this. Scroll down um, uh -huh. and there's a book called The Iron Republic, okay? Okay. And it's a story, I'll, I'll keep it short. Um, a politician out of New York was fed up of the, with politics and everything in the, in the 1800s. He sold his house, sold everything, got a big ship and a crew, went to Antarctica, and he found an opening. He found an opening in Antarctica, and they kind of went into it a little bit, and then it sucked them through, and then they popped out into the ocean again, and um, they were lost. They were lost for a long time. So, you know, maybe he went through, um, let's say he went through here went through here. They're lost in the okay. ocean for three months. Then they found land and they saw a city and they pulled up and a boat came out and the guy's like, Hey, you know, we're from America. Where are we? He goes, this is the iron Republic. And they go, what's that? He goes, well, it's on the other side of Antarctica, about the same distance as the United States is. Hmm. So same. the iron Republic knows about us, but we don't so, know about so, them. So the iron Republic, the bottom line is in the 1600s, they were tired of the tyranny that was going on here. So they picked okay. up and they left and they went out to the outer lands and started their own country. Okay. They started their own civilization. Okay. This is the So the guy lived there for like 10 years and um, okay. he got married. He fell in love, got married and his wife ended up dying and he got distraught and he went back and he landed in Florida and told the story. And he told the story. They had flat screen TVs and floating electric cars in the silent city and, and a whole different government. Okay. All this detail, okay? It was all okay. published in Florida Magazine. And guess what? You can't find a single copy of that magazine anymore, right? You can find a copy of anything on eBay. Whoa. Right? I, you Every know what? I, single I, physical copy has been removed. Moved. Yes. I have run across that with certain things that you try looking them up. And not even for a thousand dollars, we find the out of print version of, of certain things. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. That it's like, so, come on. So tyranny, can you imagine tyranny? I couldn't imagine tyranny. Why would we ever want to so leave? Let me ask you this, this means wonderful. then that if you does it mean that if they wanted to come this way, they're not allowed to either? Like you in other what? words, that there's there's a there's another book in here. It's a really short book. It's really easy. It's called um the navigator who crossed the ice wall. Okay. And um, okay. yeah, this, this book right here, navigator across the ice wall. It's actually three little books and uh, you can literally sit down in one, one sitting and read them. And it's a story about different people and groups that have traveled in between these ponds. What do I mean by the ponds? Okay. Okay. So I'm a, now again, I'm a fan of this theory. This is our greater world. Okay. We live here in the center of, let's say, this pond. And here's other pond, right. right? A piece of the plane they occupy, a piece of the plane might be called the planet, right? Piece of the plane, right. Okay. Planet, right? 
And so you can travel between now, maybe this is a hostile land and maybe this is friendly lands and maybe these people are high tech and maybe these people are primitive and whatever. And so the whole story is about, um, there's a group called the custodians. They're the ones that allow the travel kind of like the galactic federation, if you will. Right. And then there's hostile lands. Maybe that's like the Klingons or whatever, you know, the, you know, just think of, think of Star Wars. And, um, they also said that all humans that are uh, that are a high enough vibration to travel between these worlds, um, they all have a connection to the creator called the source. What does that sound okay. like? The source. They have this power yes. within them called the source, the force. Okay. The force from right. Star Wars. The so Star Wars. Yes, of course. May the force a, be with you. Is a story about a reality that's here on Earth in the outer space not outer space the outer space space. okay everyone's waiting for disclosure disclosures here it's a day trip away it's not you know light years away i have to ask you do you think that then these stories that you hear about atlantis oh absolutely 100 true comes from that there's so many stories Uh, atlantis i mean when you start looking when you start looking have you looked into the giant trees and the and the and giants and stuff on earth Sure. Right. Yeah, it is. Yes. Exactly. Yes. It's the, all of our history is a lie. They don't want us to know what this place is. They want us to think we're on a ball because then you could discard all of these old stories that none of that makes, makes any sense. Right. You know, they, they even take the old Greek gods like Atlas. He's holding up the earth. Mm-hmm. If he's holding up a heliocentric earth, what the heck is he standing on? He's in outer space. Okay. He's holding up the sky. Okay. Right. Atlas exactly. is holding up the sky. Right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> now, let me ask you, do you, what do you think? How do ETs figure in all of this? Is this just. What is ET? Hype? Extraterrestrial. Extra Terra. What's Terra? Land. Extra land. Yes. Extra Terra. Right. Out there in the outer space. Extra Terra. Right here. A couple thousand miles away. Okay. That's so you don't. Th- well, let's go with a traditional, what people think of as ETs as in uh, from another planet. Or off Earth, do, or do you really think that when they, what if there are such things as ETs? Really, it's like on our Earth, they're Earthlings anyway. How's this? <laughs> you know. So, what do you think? I or think, interdimensional. I, I think that we're all from these outer lands, and we were brought here into this school that we call Earth, mm-hmm. the Earth Pond. Okay. And, and you know, you have Chinese people, and you have um, you know all different types of people. They're all different races that come from other lands, not just within okay. our pond. Okay. I mean, if you start okay. looking into the orphan trains and everything, you know, in the night in the early 1900s, all of a sudden, a half a million kids show up on trains, right? And they're saying stuff like right. we're here to repopulate the world. We, you know, I don't know why I don't have a belly button. Okay. Just weird stuff. Okay. This world. Is that is weird. Stuff. Yes. Write this down, everybody. Right. On Instagram, go to I'm the improbable dreamer. All one word. I'm the improbable dreamer. I'm the improbable dreamer. Sit back for 10 minutes or an hour. And just start going through his short little videos. And I challenge you to get through 20 without your head exploding. Okay. Your head will explode. Well, you know what? I know that they had the orphan trains, like supposedly like right after the civil war, you know, supposedly from all these children that were left. Where did they come from? No, no. Yeah, but that's a lot of kids. kids. Everyone gave up your kids at the same time. No, absolutely not. I'm the improbable dreamer. He addresses it. Okay. Here's Atlas holding up the globe. That's not what he's right. holding. He's holding up the sky. He's holding up the firmament. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's what it used to okay. be, but they changed it. They changed it. Okay. Just like okay. The, the Egyptians, their God is holding up the sky with all the stars. Okay. Not holding up the globe. Okay. Right. This is ridiculous. Okay. Okay. So in your theory, then this is, is this then all that there is? The, the the so some some people will say this is all there is god they're the bible literalists li- literalists and say right. god created the ferment separate the waters waters we live in this one bubble that's it there's nothing else and right. that's it okay ah, okay I think that's kind of a waste of space or a limitation on god i don't know but if that's all there okay. was it's still kind of amazing okay but right. i think that there's more land 
but I'm not going to, I'm not going to claim it as a fact. I think it's more land. I want the right to go explore. I want airships back, right? Airships can stay in the air forever. Okay. Sure. So yeah. let's have airships back. That's why they got rid of them. You know why they get rid of it? They demonized it with the one crash. You had the, the, um, the Hindenburg and they said, Oh, hydrogen, it's too dangerous. Okay. Yeah, well, I remember that. that yeah, afraid they of crashed hydrogen. and burned and they said, yeah. forget oh, that idea. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then um, helium. Well, there's a helium shortage. You know why there's a helium shortage? NASA no owns all of the helium companies in the world. Are you kidding me? NASA is the largest user of helium in all of the world. What the heck does NASA need helium for? <laughs> good okay. question. Yeah, that's a very good question. Because all of their rockets are helium. They're 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 balloons. Nobody is ever on one of those rockets. No one's ever on those rockets. Ever. <laughs> well, what about the Challenger? That is. What about the Challenger? All oh, the the teacher died. Yeah. Okay, I was just in a movie. It's the third um, in a trilogy. This one's called Level With Me. Levelwithmefilm.com. Levelwithmefilm.com. Go there, watch uh -huh. the movie, and then your mind will explode because you'll find out that six of the seven astronauts are still alive working at universities using their same name. Okay? They all amazingly had twin brothers and sisters. <laughs> With the exact they're doppelgangers that they look exactly like them because they're twins and they never showed up at their funeral or spoke at their funeral. That's weird. Okay. And there's no record of them being born, but they all had twins. Okay. That's just the beginning. Okay. That's just the beginning. All right. Okay. Let me ask. And, and since you've got those pictures behind you, why then did when all these uh, thinkers, Galileo, Copernicus, why would they, when they were trying to prove, this you know the sphere thing why would they be persecuted they were exiled you name it they were under threat of death in some cases why fiction 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 okay let's hear that's it. That, i don't I'm, they're fiction i don't believe they ever existed really they're okay. made up stories okay it's just like the dinosaurs right you know dinosaurs aren't real right no no oh, no oh my I, lord I, I, oh my I, I, lord so no, all I, of the history I, I, and all I, the construction know, of all of the world, Come on, all of the that. history <laughs> and all of the construction of all of the world, the, from the pyramids everywhere, nobody ever found a dinosaur bone. And then some royal guy in the 1800s wrote a paper theorizing that dinosaurs existed. A year later to the day, he and his team discovered the first dinosaur. Okay? Okay. No dinosaur skull has ever been found. All the dinosaurs you see in museums are paper mache, not paper mache. Well, no, I know they're, they're, they're ground up chicken bones because yes. the, the the real bones are too too you know too, they're radioactive or whatever. Okay, they're too precious to let anyone see. They only find like they find like a a a, um, a vertebrae bone on top of a mountain. And they're like, well, that can't be a whale because it's on the top of a mountain, or maybe it could be a whale bone on the top of a mountain. Okay, you don't know because right. we're not on a ball, we're on a flat plane, and maybe the flood was real. Okay. Right. So, so they speculate all this stuff. The reason dinosaurs were brought up, it was to hide any evidence found in the future of giant humans. When I say giants, I'm not talking 10, 20, 30 feet tall. I'm talking giants. Okay. Okay. There is giants, right? I'm the improbable dreamer. Go watch his okay. videos. Okay. Okay. And then you'll For start sure. to understand. And by the way, he's only scratching the surface of what this world was, what this realm was. Um, in the, in the app under the homeschool button, if I hit, whoop, I'm not on the app. Um, there's some there's some great resources there. Here we go. If I hit the home button, the 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 little house, um, right here, this button right here, this will blow you away. Mm -hmm. Every Sunday, one new video. Um, just watch okay. it. All right, this this, okay. this will blow your mind. And then on the web button, the web page button, um, we have the lost history. Um, the Lost okay. History, Tataria. Um, All right. Start subbing to some of those channels. And then Giant Trees. When I say Giant Tree, what's the biggest tree you think I'm talking about? Well, you always think of the sequoias, like in sequoias. California. Right, right. Yeah. So I'm talking about a tree where the base of that tree could be 20, 30 miles in circumference. Oh, that's huge. No. No, that's no, too I big know, for no. you to even fathom, right? 
That'd be watch, like, that's huge. Watch those giant tree videos because it's not a theory anymore. Now, what happened? Okay. Why were they cut down? Did fallen angels do it? Was it what? Well, who knows? Okay. Okay. But this guy shows these rock ridges, huge rock ridges. We all seen them. And he's like, look how they're breaking okay. apart. Look how those rocks are shearing. He goes, it's the exact same way a cedar tree would would decompose. And he shows it exactly, exactly, exactly. And he's looking, you can see the circles in the rock. But then he found a place where he cleaved off some of the rock and it turned into wood. It hadn't turned to rock yet. So it's not even a theory anymore that that was a tree. Okay. It was a tree. The question is, what part of the tree was it? Was it a, a branch? Was it the base? Okay. And he shows where the base is. Okay. This right. is a lot to take in because check this out. You don't live on a globe. Everything you were taught in school is a lie. Everything you thought was a lie. Well, the, I mean, you know what? And, and, and dinosaurs don't exist. Nuclear bombs. Okay, let me don't ask exist. you something. So basic. So, <laughs> so you're saying that the 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 construct of dinosaurs, you know, as being these massive prehistoric animals, was done to what? Justify the existence or overlook the existence of giants or what? It's, a, it's two things. One, it's to hide uh, any evidence. Like when we find a, a huge femur, they're like, oh, that's from a dinosaur. No, no, that can't be a human. That femur is, you know, 20 feet long, you know, or whatever it is. Right. Okay. And so I understand now. I get it. And then the other thing it was, it's, um, it's part of the evolution story because evolution uh, dis, dis dilutes a creator, right? Because, you know, hey, you know, a uh, uh, lightning struck, created an amoeba, impossible. And the amoeba turned into a fish, impossible. And the fish grew legs and climbed out of the water and found another sexy fish. And they had a mutant son that turned into a monkey who found another mutant monkey that was a female that had a baby that turned into a human. Okay. This is the story of evolution. Okay. This right. is no, the people, cool. people don't fail that that supposedly missing link has never been produced. And supposedly proven evolution is nonsense, but they still teach it in school. They still teach it oh, in yeah. school because they need to control the minds. Of sure. the young people, because you 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 change, you know, you go to a ten year old, a twelve year old, and say, "Hey, the Earth is flat." They'll chop your head off. They'll be like, "No, it's not." They've been programmed it's, so strong, right? Yes, I know that. And then I know that. You know, I love space. My, I watched all Star Trek, Star Wars, got Battlestar Galactica, Lost in Space, mm -hmm. loved it all. Okay, yes, done on purpose. You know what? Somebody brought up Gilligan's Island. Remember Gilligan's Island? I don't know if I'm dating. absolutely, of course. Gilligan, maybe that's where Karabati is. <laughs> Hey, it might be purgatory for all yeah, we know. Maybe. Who knows? Um so, I mean, it's like <laughs> so, so you know the, Yeah, I'm just saying all of the stuff that they pushed in school, dinosaurs, volcanoes, nuclear bombs, and the globe are all fake. What? Wait a minute. Did you say volcanoes are fake? <laughs> I did. I was about to say, wait a minute, what about Krakatoa? What about all these uh Mount St. Yeah. Helens. There and is the Mount St. Helens. There was no lava. That was an explosion. I okay. think Mount St. Helens was a test, a, a directed energy weapons test. All right. But like in Hawaii, you have what's called lava tubes. Okay. Right. Um, and and there, these are electrical currents that go through the ground and create mm -hmm. these lava tubes. Okay. Um, okay. And, and there's no cone shaped mountains with lava spewing out of the top that's coming from the center of the earth just doesn't exist now okay. you'll see lava tube break the surface and it'll build up rock and it'll get higher and higher and maybe it's 25 feet tall and there's lava coming out of top but that's just 25 foot pile of lava okay right, right. Into it at nighttime and uh you know put it all out of uh, out of context and um and then you'll you'll be like oh that's a giant mountain they just make it look like a giant mountain but you know you can take rocks you can put electricity through them and okay. uh, it turns them into lava right yeah, right, molten. That's what it is. Yeah, molten, yeah that's all it molten is. Molten rock. It's, it's molten rock. So, do you think like the the Tunga, Tungaska Tungaska blast? Do you think that was a directed uh, energy weapon? I don't know. I wasn't there, but it wasn't a rock coming from space. It was some sort of weapon. Um, you know, was it an electrical discharge between the firmament and the earth? Mm -hmm. Was it a was it a military weapon? Was it? It's was it something? I don't know what it was, but it wasn't what they told us. Well, no, right? well, that's one of the things. From what I understand, it's never really been explained as to right. what it was or where it came from or what right. how it was produced, in other words. Right. I mean, because we're talking here 
how can I say, it? if we are looking at something that has a weapon that has that capability, it's like, who who's at the, who's got who's got their finger on the trigger of that thing? That's pretty scary. Well, I mean, we it, don't know what that is. I mean, but they have us believing that nuclear bombs are real. Nuclear bombs aren't real. What about Hiroshima and Nagasaki? Right. Yes. Um, three days later, the sandwich shops were open. The trains were running. People were back to work. Um, it was a just a dynamite bomb. That's all it was. And, uh, you know, yes, people died. OK, but there's no radiation. There's no nothing. Right. It's all nonsense to keep you in fear. Nuclear bombs don't exist. There was a guy by the name of Gaylor Windsor, Galen Windsor, who worked in the mm -hmm. nuclear power reg um, industry. And he was going around the 50s okay. trying to show people that that uh, plutonium is not dangerous, that he'd swim in the pools in nuclear um, power plants and he would eat uranium. He'd, what, he'd put powder on his okay. hand, he'd lick his hand. And he's like, it's not dangerous. Right. And then if you okay. look at the Taria, you know, the old world stuff, they were heating homes with these pellets, you know, that don't go away. Right. Like, imagine if you had like something the size of your fist that heated your home for a hundred years. Okay. Boy. Yeah. Let me tell you something. Those Wouldn't energy nice? companies, they'd be like. Right. It, and that's how they control us. Fake money, energy, fake map, fake land, fake shortages, fake everything. Right. Fake. Uh, you know, right. we need yes. government to, to help us. No, we don't. Yes. Leave us I alone. It. I believe it. Right. Yeah. And we, yeah. we don't have to pay attention to any of them. They say the only truth in the world is death and taxes. Both lies. All right. <laughs> it's like, I don't know about the tax part, but the death part, I don't know how you get away from that one, though. As a I, physical I death. think that I think that uh, physical death is a thing, but I don't believe that is the end. I think that we're here, you know. Um, this is a this is the picture of Jay Toll and media infrared. He's seeing things that are so far, far away. They'd be miles and miles and miles below the curve. OK, this is okay. this is impossible on a ball. I mean, we could do there, there's so many different different things. This is um oh, this OK, is, this is showing when you zoom out something, it's angular size and a little miraging. It disappears. Mm -hmm. OK, things disappear right. into the horizontal eye zone. Okay. Right. I see. I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. And it's because, of course, you're coming in. Right. Exactly. It, right. It, it's angular size gets smaller. Um, you know, there, there's so many things. This is um. let me show you one. This is this is one. Oh, that, OK. See, yeah, yeah. It puts in context. Yeah. yeah. So out here is Mount Canago. It's 175 miles away. And from this viewing spot in Allusia, France, um, the top of the mountain should be over half a mile below the curve. Guess what? We can't see it. Must be a ball, right? Well, okay. the light, we don't see. You see the light that's bouncing off of me. So we would see the light from the sun that's bouncing off of the mountain. We don't see it. Right. Because that light okay. bouncing off the mountain isn't as bright as the sun. And that light can't push 175 miles through the atmosphere because it just gets washed out. It's like sound. It gets weaker over distance. Light gets weaker over distance. But twice a year, the sun migrates in between the two tropics and it lines up with the mountain and that viewing spot. And when it does, all of a sudden you can see it because it backlights the mountain. Here's the whole mountain. The very top up here should be over mm -hmm. half a mile below the curve, but it's right there. Right. Okay. And yep. because you can't see it doesn't mean it's not there. It just means that the light can't make it to your eyes. Okay. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Now let me ask you the, and, and, you know, I'm going, do you think then that, you, and I'm sure you've seen that, that movie, The Truman Show, where basically he's oh, yeah. lived his entire life. And it's very similar to what you're describing. Was that like a tongue in cheek? We're making it look like oh, a fantasy. Absolutely. It's a, it's a, you know, showing them, it's showing a lot of truth in The Truman Show. A lot of truth in The, in the Truman Show. Right. Here's but of course, everybody looks at it and thinks, what a, what a neat movie. Yeah. Yeah, well, we kind of live in the Truman Show, <clears throat> but right. maybe it's also a trap. Maybe they want us to believe that that's all there is, you know, maybe, right. maybe that we're trapped in here. I don't I don't I don't personally think that we're trapped. I think we're trapped in our minds and our spirit. Like we're here to raise our vibration, to learn, to love, to right. like, experience this world, to expand the mind of the creator, because we're all part of the creator. And once we do that, we graduate and we can go to maybe the outer lands. Maybe that's where it's pretty cool. OK, well, you know what? I, I I mean, like everything. Yeah, I think that. That normally you don't or 
I'll, the powers that be will will make that. Don't spend so much energy on controlling our thoughts and our behaviors by extension, unless there was there was we had some type of ability to, <clears throat> of doing something. Otherwise, it wouldn't bother. It'd be like, you know, they wouldn't expend all the time that they do with all the 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 ways that we're we're we got information pushed into us, whether it's the, through the TV or what we hear or like you said, schooling, history. You know, so, we get it from all sides. Yeah. So here we're watching a sped up sunset. Are we falling over backwards or is the sun just moving away? No, it just looks like it's dipping. It's going away. Well, it looks like it's going down because of perspective. Right. Right. And it's going behind uh -huh. this atmospheric deck right here. And it's just kind of going beyond it. Right. If I went up higher, I'd be able to see right. it again. Okay. Sure, exactly. In, in case, Depends on your. your in, in, well, in that case, view. it will. So. Let me show you another one. Um, this is one where I had, it was a super clear day in the middle of the winter, had my drone up, it's below freezing and okay. super clear. Now the sun went down, 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 down. Now if we were spinning, it would just keep on going, but it didn't. It went down, 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 and it stopped. And it sat here for 10 minutes. Now this is super sped up again. It sat here. Okay. All right. It sat here. And what's it doing? All right. It's going farther it's away. But because of my angle of view and the atmosphere, it's, it's already at the bottom of its personal atmospheric dome and it just fades away. It takes its light. Let me ask you, how far up was the drone then? It was uh, 500 meters, 400 meters. Okay. Not that high. Okay. I mean, it was high enough. High enough where okay. uh, I'm higher than any mountains or anything in the distance. And it's clear. Right, right. No, I mean, it's, I'm talking super clear day, right? And this is just me going back and forth. The sun faded out. And went away. Now all the Globies are like, oh, you Photoshopped. Yeah, I live streamed this several times. I, I caught it seven times. Um, so is that, what, is, that, is that what you call them, Globies? Globies. Yeah, they call, they call us flurfs. I call them Globies. So they're Globies. Okay, I okay. used to be a Globie. Okay. I used to be a Globie. Um, on, on the app, if you go to the web button, the one that looks like a spider web, and you scroll to the bottom, here's uh, seven or eight or nine of those videos. Click that button. Okay. And they're all there. All of this stuff on here is stuff that you won't um, be able to find on YouTube because they, they're hiding. You search Flat Earth, Flat Earth Dave, Flat Earth Sunset, Flat Earth Proof, you get the same videos every time. It's all nonsense. They you know what? You're right. I'm going to say it. I heard, and this was a while back, that I heard that they were either taking them off or something, any videos having to do with the topic of Flat Earth. I was like, who cares? Like, what's the big deal? Yeah. It's like, it's like. Well, they haven't taken them so, off yet, but you can't find them unless you know exactly the channel name and search. And literally, you know, one of our videos, a great video, it's called The Stranger's Guide to Flat Earth 21 Questions, can be found right, where could it be found? It could be found right here in this Flat Earth videos, um, feature length movies. Um, Flat Earth, a, stra no, a Stranger's Guide to Flat Earth 21 Questions. That's a pretty unique title. Okay. Got, you know, the original had millions of views. Okay. Right. It doesn't show up. You search for it. You're going to get all the same crap. Okay. Well, okay. Well, that doesn't make sense. The why, exactly. why the government is feeding you. The Google is feeding you um, what they want you to see. That should, that should raise enough flags, but that movie, that video alone, sure. that's a great starting place. 21 short questions and answers, question and answers. Um, it'll blow your mind. It's, it's, it's right there. So let me ask you, do you think that considering what's been going on in the last couple of years, do you think more people now, their minds are more open? So on the app, we have what's called the Flat Earth Friend Finder. Let me just go to a quick mm -hmm. world view for you. Um, okay. This, this, this is a fraction of 1% of the Flat Earthers on, on Earth, okay? Let's take a look, okay. let's load for a second, and then we're gonna go over to the United States. Here we go, right? Here's the United States. These are the people that are on the app that have registered for the friend finder. Do you think flat earth, do you think people are open-minded yet? Look at this. Yeah, sure. looks like that. Look, look wow. at it. Look, look at the UK. You can't even see it. All right. Okay. okay. These are people that are awake and aware and are spreading the word right now. We just broke a hundred thousand on the friend finder um, all over okay. the world, everywhere, Australia, New Zealand. We even have a guy in Antarctica. Okay. Okay. Look, all right. I mean, so, are people waking up? Yeah. Look, you're you're opening your mind. You know, five years sure. ago, you might not have had this conversation. Okay? No, no, but, I would have been like, and I consider myself a pretty open-minded, but I'd be like, huh? <laughs> you know, it's like what? On, on the friend finder here, I can click any one of those dots 
and uh, I could yeah. message them. I could do video calls. I could do groups. There's all sorts of groups on here. And then you could do group video calls and people are having amazing conversations are using it as a, a true friend finder, as a significant other finder, as a, um, as a, uh, uh, a job finder. Cause guess what? We only want to hire people that are blue dots. Right. Right. Exactly. Or, and, I understand. Or, or, you know, people that are like-minded, these are all awake, aware, very, um, amazing people. So I've never met a, a blue dot. I don't like the orange dots are people that just joined. They become blue as soon as they do a referral or after 30 days. Um, so it's just that way somebody can look, Oh, there's a new orange dot near me. Let me, let me, uh, let me tap on that person and send them a message and uh, invite okay. them to coffee or something. And guess what? Okay. It's, it's your new, uh, it's, it's best a good friend. connection new best friend ever. Yeah. Let me ask them, Dave, um, from the natives that lived, you know, like I'm talking about up in the, you know, whether the Inuit or the Eskimos that live in all these Northern, did they have any stories? You know, a lot of their stuff, of course, is verbal tradition, oral tradition that you could I think, say. I this, think that, that, that they all knew. They all knew that the, okay. earth, that the earth was flat. I mean, if you look okay. at, if you, look at um, you know, all ancient cultures, they all um, had a flat earth cosmology. I think I have okay. right here. These are, these are all, let's make it a little bigger, right? These are all, mm -hmm. all they're all a flat earth with a firmament right except this okay. religion right here okay this religion is the nonsense <laughs> right right yeah yeah yes. they're, the, they're yes. the only ones they're the only ones right pretty interesting no I didn't, yeah i didn't know the aztecs were were flat earthers everyone was flat earthers <laughs> the, the whole <laughs> thing is just a it's a, a, a a control um a total control thing Total control. And here's is... what difference does it make? I still have to go to work on Monday. I said that. Okay. I left all of that. Okay. Now I'm talking to people like you and somehow, you know, God, God gets all the glory. I am able to do this and support myself. And not only do I support myself, I'm helping other people unplug from the matrix. That's more satisfying. Yeah, I, I think that. that, that, that is, and I understand that sometimes as a matter of fact, I think it's done on purpose that we get so caught up in the daily living because we're so distracted by this, you know, and all this other stuff that it doesn't leave time for exploring. Because like you said, before you know it, you got to get up the next day to go to work. Yeah. But I think for me personally, it's just the fact that I'm being lied to. I hate that. Yeah. I hate that. This you is know, my favorite me... buttons here. Rockets are balloons. Okay. Uh huh. Balloon rockets. It's you watch that. You know, you, you thought you loved dinosaurs. Did you think you love rockets too? <laughs> okay. Oh, no. Okay. I was like, oh. It's, it's just watch that series and uh, your your mind will be blown. It's just, it, it, there's too much. So let me ask you, do you think that, you know, because I hear people question, which is a valid question, like after supposedly we visited the moon, that all of a sudden we stopped and all the, you know, supposedly future that you would have thought, why didn't we keep going to the moon? Do you think it was because of that? That all of a sudden it was like, okay, that that chapter's closed. We we visited the moon. Let's let's not carry any further with this. Do you think we went to the moon? No, I'm saying that it was said that we went to the moon. <laughs> I'm just well, you I'm saying we that the supposedly moon? the six. You remember it was the race to the moon. Apollo nine, the eleven, war. and twelve took the same photo of Earth. Uh -huh. and the clouds cooperated, and they were the same clouds. Amazing! Wow, that's super incredible. amazing. Jeez, well, maybe it was. I maybe, seen... Yeah, maybe it was just the luck, luck of the clouds. Okay, um, it was good timing. Yeah, it, it's uh, it's unbelievable. And then the Japanese just took this picture of Earth from the moon before uh -huh. their their thing crashed, and this dark spot yeah, right. was eclipse. It was a uh, a solar eclipse, please. Right. Okay. This is look at this. It's so stupid. Yes. It's so stupid. Yeah, that's the... right. And then and yes. then you know the the moon landing. Right. These are their boots. This is the blueprint. What's wrong there? Now the globe. That's team, a problem. They'll that's be like, problem. well, they they wore an extra like moon boot over it. You know, I'm like, where where are those? No one no one even knows where they are. Right. You know what? Those are the, those little details that are never like. How yeah. can I say? Never come out. Right. I've never seen this? that. That thing with this? a boot. I've never seen that. How about this? The 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 rocket nozzle right. is down here. So there's two right. men in here without seats, and it left the rocket nozzle. So what did it just explode? And now it's going to float up there and happen to meet with the with the orbiting 
you know, the 2000 yeah, like, mile exactly. an hour. Like how's a the orbit is going so around like a thousand or 2000 miles an hour. It's going to connect. Right. Exactly. Where's the rocket on this thing? Okay. And what happens if those guys stink. hiccup or, or move? The thing's going to go start tumbling. Okay. There's no resistance. There's no propulsion. Gyros. There's no propulsion. It's so stupid. Okay. That's, that, that's, so let me ask you then, what do you think then is all this thing that you see with Tesla and the X and the Blue Origins? What are they doing? That we're going to be supposedly the next Martians. Nobody is ever on a rocket except for a stuntman that tried to jump a canyon and killed himself. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Nobody is ever on those rockets. Right. Okay. So um, let's, let's look at, uh, you know, and, and it's, it's unbelievable what they do. I mean, they're, they're all of their sexual innuendos. Um, you know, they, they write sex in the clouds, right? This is what I call the two pack rocket, right? The top of this okay. is not a real rocket launch. You can tell the difference between a real one, a real like launching something because there's a smoke trail. Remember everything had a smoke trail? Right. Look, look at yes. this clean little gas flame. There's no little smoke on the ground, okay. but there's no, no smoke trail. And where's the thrust? Wouldn't that be blowing all this smoke away? Okay. Right. Exactly. Right? And, and they always throw this close up so we can't see that there's no trail. Okay. But watch right, up right here. Watch up here. This, something looks wrong here. And then all of a sudden we see that what 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 is what is all of that okay let's let's go a little what? watch where'd it go 10 percent speed so i'm yeah I, I slowed it down so just so you can see it this is a glitch this is called project blue beam okay where they're projecting okay. something in the sky there's nobody on the ground watching that this, i was about this, to say are we talking here something that's a projection yeah, not in other words. This this one's a projection. So there was one um one time we were we we're nosing around on some um um pictures of NASA and we're zooming in on stuff and we're like, what are these weird spotlights? And we zoomed in and we're trying to figure it out. We saw like a nameplate, no serial number, and we we were able to look it up. It's from a holographic projection company. What is NASA doing with holographic ah. projection company lights, these giant things on their lawn? Okay, right. That is so interesting. And and NASA has huge contracts with CGI companies, green screen companies, acrobatic, you know, wire companies. Okay. They, they have all these. So let me ask something about what, and, and, and the reason why I say this is I live in Florida and I've got the space coast, a few, not, you know, what about these people that go out there and they, they see these rockets lift so, off? Is so that just for show? Yeah. It's just for show. Like when you're watching the, the shuttle take off. Um, right. Maybe this one. So, this is a helium tank. It's okay. helium. This is also helium. It's got a little fireworks on the bottom. This is also a balloon. This is all a balloon. Okay. That's why it goes up so slow. And that's why it rolls over on its back because this is a little heavier. Okay. But look at this thing. I don't know if you can uh -huh. tell. It, this thing is right, going right, to, of right. course, they're showing so close, right? And it's going to roll over, right? These are lights. This isn't fire pushing it into the sky. Right. And it, now it's so close. You can't see how fast it's going, but it's not going that fast at all. When you actually analyze the smoke that's coming off of these things, I think it's going 50 miles an okay. hour max. Look at the smoke. Really? Look, look at, look at it. How fast is this thing going? Okay. Let me show you another one. Um, how about this one? All right. All right. So this is a fascinating one. So this is the external tank. Then they're filmed. Look at this, right? They're, 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 that, that was an accident. They wanted to, wanted you to see that they wanted you to see this this is the, okay. the the twenty thousand pound steel tank falling back to earth now the story is it falls so fast that it atomizes and before it hits the ground and it burns up okay all right so so what is going on with this tank hold on let me find um it's floating that's what it looks like to me hold on here it is um external tank here we go all right so here it is this is supposedly falling. Does this look like it's falling or no. floating? This is no, like it's floating. Macy's it's day. Floating. No, it's supposedly falling, but here it's worse than that. Guess who's filming this? The guy on Ooh. the shuttle that's on his way up to space. So he's going up at 17,000 miles an hour. And this, this thing, thing is, is like the same size. It's right next now watch. To yeah. Watch. Did you see that little tissue that felt went by? Watch, watch right here. A tissue is going to go by that's going to give you perspective on how fast this thing's going. Okay, there's like a piece of paper floating. Here it comes, ready? In about three seconds. One, two, three. There it goes. 
There, yeah, that's like so that shows you I think it's, it's not moving. Floating. But this it's thing is being filmed by guys on their way to space. That that's yeah, and it's but it's keeping, but it's keeping. It's still it's parallel to them. It's right. like that's right there. And, and on that rockets are balloons. This one we spotted a cloaked aircraft that was following this thing. Some sort of recovery craft. Okay. okay. And um, maybe it's on here. Maybe I could show you. Is it here? Hold on. It is. I can't. Not on this one. Um, but we we actually change the contrast and we can see it, right? So again, there's all sorts of shenanigans going on here. All sorts of. That's shenanigans. it. I, yeah, you would have thought that thing would have disappeared, like fallen off. It, and, it would be especially gone, especially if they were in traveling in opposite directions. Second, right? Right. It would be that gone is, in a second. So let me. I gotta. I gotta ask you. Do you think these last sightings of those balloons have anything to do? These so, balloons that all of a sudden were found to be floating all over. Yeah. All well. These- so. So. So NASA. You know. Again, they're the largest um, consumers of helium, and they own all the helium companies in the world. They control the helium market. Um, NASA admits that they have tens of thousands of satellites. Satellites are on hanging from balloons. Okay. Right? Uh, Satellites uh satellites hanging from balloons. That's it right here. Yeah. They launch them in Antarctica. Mm, Interesting. Um, Right. And um, they're they're up in the sky all the time. And you know that um, the National Weather Bureau, or or maybe it's run by NASA also, they launch 1,000 balloons all over the Earth at the exact same time twice every single day. Really? These are weather balloons that are... Taking all that data, putting it into a supercomputer, and they map uh-huh. out the whole world. Okay? okay. Now, are we a spinning, whirling, twirling, spiraling world, or are we a flat stationary world with balloons floating above it? Okay. This is a satellite. Okay. Right. Yeah. I, I guess what that. they crash all over the Earth. Okay. They crash all over the Earth. What's going on here? I got something. Oh, there we go. Um. What happened to my crash balloon? Is this it? I don't know what's going on there. Um, that is uh, not the video I was looking for. Um, all right, well, that is, um, I was telling you before about the, the buoys that go around Antarctica right. right here. This is one of them. Right. Okay. Yes. So these are all over the place out there. So you really can't go anywhere. And then, um, you know, people are like, well, what about Starlink, right? Look, this is, I suppose this is the video we get of them launching Starlink, right? This is right. like this weird fisheye lens and they're spitting out these little, these little things that are going to fall around the uh-huh. earth as it's orbiting and, and, or, you know, changing directions. It's going in front of the sun, around the sun. And these things are just going to go and give you internet. This is all absolute and total nonsense. That's that's wow. Yeah, yeah. That that, that is a weird angle, right? And when you look that at you know, a- people like I've seen the row of satellites going right. If you look up and and I've seen the ISS, the thing that they call the ISS, right? It it's not it it can't be the distance that they tell us, right? And the brightness that we see it, but the ISS looks like it's about the same size as these Starlink satellites, but the Starlink satellites okay. are farther away than the ISS and the ISS is the size of a football field. The Starlink satellites are the size of a size of a school desk. Okay. So it's okay. tiny, you know, like here's the ISS and then here's the Starlink satellite, Starlink satellites farther away. And you think it looks like the same size or that you could even see it. Okay. It's all just a parlor trick. Uh-huh. In the sky. It's a parlor trick in the sky. There's so much to get into again. So do you do you think ultimately that they're going to pull the uh, UFO um, menace on us? I think that I, I think too many people know about it now. I think that they they okay. can't pull this stuff. They can try to pre-program us. You know, like they told right. us nine eleven for years and years and years. They pre-programmed us all the way from twenty years earlier with the Super Tramp album predicting nine eleven. Right. Front cover, Time Magazine, 9-11 with Rockefeller and his watch. It's a 9-11 and the towers in the distance. All right. stuff. The Simpsons, 
right? With their cover showing the money in front of 9-11 and how that was all tied together, all of it. And then they pulled it off because nobody was paying attention. Too many people know about the alien invasion right now, the fake alien right. invasion. So I don't think they can pull it off. I think everybody's like, oh, really? <laughs> like, Are you kidding I got me? The, I got the popcorn ready to go. Yeah, I think yeah. I think I agree with you. I think a lot of people now are just a little bit what's the word cynical? Yeah. About something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it. So that um yeah, I think I think yeah, there's been people have had rude awakenings, but I think in mass and I don't know maybe it's again because of social media and that we have so much exposure that we could expose so many people at the same time that a lot of people are like you know, when you're like, almost like you want to say that the, let's, let's use the matrix as an example, that thing of the matrix where it's like, the reality is far from what the person, what you think is reality. How's that? Well, the, the matrix is, the, is the heliocentric system is the matrix. Think about it. It's literally a prison for your mind, right? You yes. live on this globe. There's nothing else. That's where you live. Right. This fake reality. Everything you know is fake. Watch the news. You want to find out what's fake? Watch the news. Whatever they're talking about, it's yes. fake. Okay. Oh no. Now and hey. I think a lot of people now is like, whatever they say, oh, that's the opposite. You know, it's like whatever, right. whatever it might be. I think a lot of people now are looking at it that way. At the very least, questioning it, like, meh, you know, since you're the source, I am gonna question it. And once upon a time, that wasn't the case. It it's um I think it was William Casey, the CIA director, said once the American, everything the American public believes is fake, we'll, our job is complete. And I used to laugh at that. I'm like, there's no way. You know, every, everything. It's everything. There's yeah. people used to say to me, Dave, you're such a conspiracy theorist. You know what? Nate, tell me one thing that's real. I'm like, well, Sully landed that plane on the Hudson River that got hit by some birds. That was real. And then I found out it wasn't real. Okay. Well, it, it, I think that even now, but why would they do it, Dave? Why would they? Well, a lot like of that, that, I guess. You know what? I, I have a lot of questions on why they do a lot of things, but they do a lot of things. It's all well, it's about like, mind control. It's well, it's a grand illusion, but you know, as Welcome your the grand illusion audience becomes more, how can I say, more tech savvy or more questioning, then you the media the the the, the illusion's got to get bigger. All right. The illusion gotta, is huge. Be more it's, convincing. It's fascinating. The illusion is mind blowing what they've done. Hats off to the elite because they have really done yes. a number hiding our world. But here's the thing. This world is too fascinating. Stop. You know, don't it doesn't, I don't care if you're 80 years old and you're listening to this. It's not too late to see the world for what it is. And the yeah. wonder like people lose one, you know, people lose the will to live because they've ah, I've seen it all. We haven't seen anything. Okay. No, you know, no. we haven't seen anything. This world is insane. It's crazy. Insane. Right. Like I walk through the woods. I'm like, wow, that rock ridge. That's a I mean, tell you something, and it's not, they want to put yeah. us in 15 minute cities. So yeah. this is like 15 minutes cities, programmable the... money. You know, oh, I'm sorry. Your money's not going to work today. Cause you got to get the Jimmy jab. Okay. Oh, yeah. We're like, dude, about it. we saw what you posted. Mm -mm, yeah. Mm -mm, that trip that oh, you were taking to, oh. nah, you're not going anywhere. Yeah. And I think a lot of people still have a hard time thinking that that would happen, but unfortunately, no. Oh, my God. You know the difference between a conspiracy theorist and a fact? Let's hear it. About three months. <laughs> you're right. It's, yeah, I agree. It's, it's, I agree. The stuff, the stuff, you know, everything I used to talk about, and everyone said you're crazy or I still talk about. Every single mm -hmm. thing has come true. Every single thing has come true. Maybe it came true because I'm the one talking about it, but that would suck. But who oh, knows? No. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of joking about that. But the thing is, it's easy to see through their lives once you understand where you're standing. If you're on oh, a sure. ball spinning out of sure. control, you can't think. You can't get it all. Well, I'm doing pretty good. I got a good job. I got a beautiful house. We got a vacation house. You know, and uh, you know, I'm doing yeah. fine on my globe. Great. Enjoy your ball. You're wasting, you're wasting creation. I mean, this this world yeah. is magical. And the biggest conspiracy is that this world is conspiring to give you everything that you're thinking. Well, it is, yeah, because we're we're guided down that. And I think that's that's what's happening before people were going along this route and they were just being led along and it was, please come this way. And now that people are going, wait, 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 and they're being shoved. They're like, wait a minute, what's with all the shoving? 
you know, and I think that's why people are waking up thinking, I'm not ready to go with a program. More people, in other words, before it was the outliers would do that. And now more how's this, the normies are going, stop with the shoving. Why, what, what, why is it that you want me to do, go this way or think this way or do that? Why? Here, here's here's the thing for those up. those of you that are that are hearing this for the first time on the fence, think Flutter is so stupid. I'm offering three bitcoins for one globe proof. That's worth your time. Okay, there's a okay. whole bunch of different ways. One, get the app. It's three dollars for life. Okay, okay, um, and you get all you get almost all the features on the app for that three dollars. But every day there's a featured video. Watch this video every day for two weeks. Okay, for that two weeks. If you think you have a globe proof, send it to me. You win three bitcoins. But before you do. Hit the frequently asked questions button. Make sure it's not answered there because it probably is. Um, and then, <laughs> then start over, okay? You try to come up with another okay. one. And that's how you'll become a flat earther. So don't do it if you don't want to become a flat earther, right? The other way is on my website, flatearthdave.com, I have the crash course. Go scroll down to that. And there's um, a list of, I don't know, 15 or 20 videos. Just go through the first five videos. That's it. So in other five. words. Yeah. Caveat emptor, let the buyer beware. If you get exposed to these ideas, is that what you're saying? Yeah, it's it's, an, might... it's a fungus that you'll never get rid of because right. there's so many people becoming flat earthers um, and none of them ever switch back and none of them ever put it down out of boredom. Once you become a flat earther, every day is a day of wonderment. Every day, it's like a, being a child again, right? Because it's like, there's so much to learn every single day. I've been doing this for almost 10 years, not flat, not flat earth, mm -hmm. like eight years, whatever. And um, every day before noon, my mind is blown. Usually before 8 a.m., my mind is blown. Okay. Again, learning new things every single day. It's truly and what amazing. is it? You just have, I imagine you have people coming out there and what they're sending you information. Oh, people send me videos. stuff. I, I go down new, you know, I follow great channels. I go on the app and any videos you find, you like that? Follow that channel. Follow that channel. Okay. Right? Um, before it disappears, but I, I've backed up all of this stuff. Um, okay. Just start watching these things and then don't believe anything. Go verify it yourself. I did the same thing. I'm like, right. oh, show me boats go over the horizon and they're able to pull it back, um, you know, with a zoom camera. So I, that's when the P the Nikon P 1000 came out or P 900. I went out and bought it and um, I went out and did the same thing. You can go out, watch a watch a boat disappear over the horizon and it disappeared. Okay. And then you could zoom it back in. So here's the thing. Here's our horizon. Right. And All right. Every, in the distance, everything's small. So there's no boat out here. So we're zooming in. And so we're making this horizon bigger and bigger. And as we make it bigger and bigger, right. like, look, there's a boat. Okay. Was that over the right. curve? Was that over the curve? Now watch the no. boat's going to disappear from the bottom of Now, can my finger hide that whole boat? But if my finger's in the foreground, exactly. can hide at a the whole point, boat. it can. Yeah. And just like at these little point. waves in the foreground are hiding the boat from the bottom up. That's why things disappear from the bottom up. Okay. That's it. Right. These tiny little waves can hide an entire city. Okay. Right. As because minute. of the distance. It Because of the distance. Can my finger hide my whole face? No, but exactly. If you put it up right. the distance. Yeah. Right. So people don't understand perspective. Perspective sure. does it all. Right. And then once you exactly. understand, once you understand that, you know. Um, yeah. Then it's like when you have something to show scale. Right. Then everything changes when you see Why can't scale. we see Polaris? Why can't you see the streetlight that's you know way past this one? Because it merges with the horizon. This is the sun, right? It's just going down. Right. It's going away, just like these streetlights are going away. Okay. It's not going down, it's just going away. It's that simple. Right. Distance wise. It distance, yeah. And then it in a straight line, I guess right. is what I'm saying. Distance yeah. in a straight line. Yeah. Right. Oh, and then, and then, uh, it, you know what, you know what it, it's all on how you look at things. So for example, so here's a, a an illustration. We got clouds and you're like, oh, these clouds are all the same height. These are just farther away. And you got the water and you got the pier and you got these lights mm -hmm. and the grass, right? The grass appears to be slightly higher. Maybe it's just a couple inches or a foot than the pier. And the pier of course is higher than the water because the water would go over the pier and these lights are all the same height. They're just getting smaller and smaller. Right. Right. Can you see the Great Pyramid of, of Giza? Well, if I look at it from that perspective, yes. Where is it? It's I mean, if you, well, if you use the pier and you look at it as triangular. It's actually the Great Pyramid of Giza. Right, exactly. Okay. 
You're absolutely right. So in reality, this is higher than this, right? Yes, right. But your mind didn't see it that way. Right, right, because they have that illusion of the sky above it in such a way. And of course, the water makes it. it Which line know, is higher, the yellow line or the red line? Yellow. Sure. At this perspective, how's that? Okay. Which line is longer, the red line or the yellow line or the orange line? The red one. Okay. So when we look, this is my deck, and this is mm -hmm. a tree, a bush that's five feet over the deck. So this is five feet over the deck. This is okay. the edge of the deck before the beach. So this is five mm -hmm. feet below this line. And then this okay. is the water, which is 10 feet below the deck because the beach is down there. So this is 15 feet below this. I see what you're saying, but it's just, it's just, and this is several miles. This is only eight feet. This is maybe 20 feet, but see, that's the thing. And that's eight put... miles. I'm just saying, unless you can touch it, right, of course. It, unless you know what you're looking at, you cannot make any claims about its size or distance. Okay. And I think also it's the way it's presented. Even when something's put to, 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 to show scale, yeah. It all depends what, how's this, the story that's given as to what, what is this? This is what this is. You see what one, I'm saying? So one, people, one, we don't want to say people see what they're supposed to see. All right. So now so, I, I showed you those checks. Let's see if you, let's see how you do. Okay. This line right here. Yep. So we'll, we'll add a couple more lines. Is this line higher than this one or lower? The red one is lower according uh, the, the, to this. Okay. Okay, so is this blue line higher or lower than this line here? I don't see the blue line. This blue line right here. Oh, oh, mm -hmm. I didn't, I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't transition. Hold on. For a minute there, I was like, oh boy. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. There we go. This line. All right. I almost blew it. That All right. So we got this line here. It's the orange line. We add a couple more lines. And right. this blue line, is it higher or lower than this line? Higher. It's higher. Remember how you got yes. caught last time? Remember it wasn't higher? Yes. Yes. Right? So this are this line, is it higher or lower than these lines? Higher. Okay. And how about this one? Is it higher? Higher. They're all the same height. Okay. They're all the street lights. They're all the height. Exactly. That's height. what I was about to tell you. So they're all the same. So not higher or lower. They're all the same. Again, it's perspective. Right. It's all of about course. perspective. It's so perspective. that's how the sun goes down. Boom, 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 boom. And then when it goes past here, you can't see it anymore. It just it merges with the horizon. People have a hard so time. So where does it go? That. Where does it go, Dave? Where does the sun, how can I say it? If Because, you know, you always think, okay, it drops below the horizon because it curves. It's, you know, that's the, no. the, 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 the us globies. You, you, you have know? the atmospheric deck, which becomes opaque, and it all merges right. together, Okay. Okay. So it goes beyond right. that. It's just like if I'm sta if you're if I'm I'm standing on there's a, a five foot a four foot high fence right here. Okay. And I'm, standing, I'm talking to you over the fence, and you're sitting right. in the yard, you know, 10, 15 feet away, and you can see me. Now I walk that way, mm -hmm. right? I'm gonna from your point of view, I'm gonna disappear over the fence. I'm gonna disappear behind the fence. Right. So and, and that fence to you looks like it's almost eye level because it's kind of a little farther away. But as I go away, I'm just going to disappear behind that fence like that. Okay, right. Okay. And so it's just going no, exactly. behind, you know. It's the distance. When you, when, um, when you uh, look at, um, here, I got one for you. When you look, when you look into the distance, then we'll, then we'll I think we got to wrap it up. Um, okay. When you look into the distance, mm -hmm. where is my... Uh, uh sunset perspective not that so the sun is going beyond this horizon what is this horizon is that the ground or is that the clouds or those mountains okay it doesn't matter it could be all three right they all yeah. merge so the sun's just going beyond it and then you okay. can't see it because it looks like it you know, the people have a hard time like well it's going into the ground nope it's perspective you that's how oh, you're no, yeah no no totally even if, let's say, let's say we're not talking here miles and miles, but yeah, as you travel away from something, it shrinks in size, not right. because there's a curve, it's just distance. You're traveling away from it. All right. So here, here's the one I wanted to show you. So, okay. So here, well, give me one second here. All right. So 
we have this guy here. He got a cloud above his head. Okay. Okay. And so we draw a line from his eyes to the cloud. It goes kind of almost straight up. And so then the clouds okay. go into the distance and due to perspective, they look like they're going down, but they're really at the same height. It's just perspective. You with me? Okay. Yes. You with me. So now we're going to draw yes. a line. We actually run a string from his eyes to this cloud over here on the horizon. Now okay. from his point of view, he sees that line going parallel with the water in a straight line right to that cloud, which is right on the horizon. So to him, okay. it looks like a straight line parallel with the water, right? Yes. But what if you were standing underneath that lot underneath that cloud, you know, 20 miles away? If you were standing would... underneath that cloud and you could see that lot, that string, what would you see? Would you see a line running straight across the water? No, you wouldn't. You would see no. a string. It was above you. From here, sloping down. Mm -hmm. so exactly. He sees a line going level. You see a line going up. You're both right looking at the same thing from two different perspectives. So now perspectives. Now the sun travels across the earth. So we're going to bring the sun across. Okay. Here. So, okay. so here, so I, I made it, made the, the, I made it smaller. So I got the cloud here and the line, you know, so his line, this is on the horizon for this guy. So the sun goes away. And when it goes beyond this cloud, this line of his, this line of sight. Now that remember that line for him is level. The, he can't see the cloud when it goes beyond you can't see the sun when it goes beyond here. Okay. Now that mm -hmm. we're looking at an orthographic view. No one ever gets to see this. Okay. When, right. but, this, but this guy sees is that cloud is here and the sun is going across the sky, but it looks like it's going down. And when it goes beyond yeah. that cloud, which looks like a horizon, but it's still 10,000 feet in the air, whatever it is, it, the sun looks like it sets into the earth. So let me ask remember, you then, what is, what remember, see... this line is going up to that cloud, but that's not how he sees it. Go ahead. What's your, let what's me ask you, so how do you explain, you know, the, the sun comes up in the east and sets in the west? Is it just? So simple. So <clears throat> here is the sun is going west and it looks like it's going down, but this is a level line. Right. right? right. And it's setting behind these mountains, clouds, whatever you want it to be. It's setting. Okay. It's setting right here. Right, right. So east and west are circles. Okay, let me show you. Okay. So, so here's here on the app. Um, the sun goes around once it. Whoops. Not what I wanted to do. Yeah, there. So the sun goes around once a day. It laps the moon every twenty eight days. So if I'm right here in the United States, right. rising, setting, rising, setting, and it takes its light away with it. Okay. Okay. Rising, setting, right? 24 okay. time zones. Wherever the sun is, it's noon. I can call my friend. Okay. I can call my friend, uh, Peter, who's in uh, Sydney, Australia. And I'd say, what time is it? And he's like, oh, it's around 10 o'clock in the morning. And I'm like, where's the sun? He's like, well, it's off center. In two hours, I call him. I'd be like, the sun's all right above me, but it's, it's actually off a little bit. Right. But in June, uh -huh. in, in, in uh, where are we at? Uh, we're in May, June. Whoops. Um, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. So in December, the sun is all okay. the way out here in, um, mm -hmm. in over the Tropic of Cancer, Capricorn. Okay. So the sun is right over Australia. It's hot in Australia in December. It's cold right. in the United States because the sun is far away. Okay. Right. Uh-huh. And so that's how seasons work. That's where the sun goes. So now the sun is going to rise in the east and set okay. in the west for everybody. Every star, every sun, every moon rises in the east, sets in the west, because they all circle around. The sun goes around this way. Um, it laps the moon every 28 days. And then if I turn the stars on, the stars um, are going slightly faster than the sun. They lap the sun once every 365 days. That's our year. Okay? So the right, sun exactly. will slip backwards into each zodiac for about a month until they, yes. all, until they lap them. Right? Right. So the, right. The, the stars keep track of the seasons and the years. The sun keeps track of the hours and the days. And the moon keeps track of the weeks and the moons. There used to be 13 right. moons of 28 days, but they stole our calendar also. <laughs> and there you go. So much more to learn. Can... And here's the thing. Take the crash course. Get the app, right? Or, or get, okay. get um, in the book section. 
frequently asked questions, flat earth, frequently asked questions. It has all the information. If you're a book person, right? Personally, yeah. I like having this in my pocket because when I talk to somebody, I can pull up a picture. I can show them a video. I can show them something. It's all there. I don't carry right. it around with me all the time, but great coffee table book, bathroom book, put this in anywhere that touches it becomes a flat earther. Okay. You're abandoned being a globey, huh? <laughs> You're, no globies here. Okay. No globies. No globies. Don't you have a sticker that says globey and then with a line across it? Yeah. <laughs> Um, oh, that's what happened. I'm like, what happened to my phone? Um, all right, we're we are um, we're good. Anything else? No, that's good. It's been great. Oh, you know it's what, a, while, while I'm, while I'm showing it, I'm not... coming out of my ears. Oh, I, I do. I do. Out of my ears. There's so much it's more like... to learn. FlatEarthDave.com. Tons of information there. Tons of videos there. But if you want to support me and have the greatest tool ever, get the app. It's three bucks. Yes, and I will have links in the credits of the show, everybody. Yeah. All right? Whether it's the podcast or the video version, I'll have links there. Right. <laughs> okay. Boy, it's like, mm, I mean, you know, like, you're in your reality goes like this. Yeah, that's what's it, happening right now. But but it, here's the thing. A lot of people just like, it, it rocks the, the apple cart. Um, but once you get over it and once you let your ego go, okay, I've been lied to my whole life. Now I have a whole reality to deal oh, sure. with. It's amazing. It's freeing. It lifts course, people it, out of depression. It's, it's, it lifts people. There's so many people that had um, flat earthers that, you know, had uh, some drug problems and they, they, they kicked the drug problem. A lot of people lifted out of depression. I think depression is when your soul is trying to tell you the truth and your mind is too lost in today's reality well, of yeah, nonsense. Yeah, because, and then yeah. that, that literally causes such a discord in your body. You become depressed, sure. right? When it you does, discover does, flat it earth, does. it brings such joy to your heart. Um, seeing truth because truth resonates. Um, it lifts people right out of depression, right? But that, 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 does. they don't want you knowing the truth. They want they want you on their drugs. They want you on their um, psychotropics, and uh, yeah, they exactly. don't want you taking any natural herbs that they can, um, you know, they can't. No, pat. no, so, no. They, we they they want to treat, not cure. That's, that's there's right. there's no money to be made in curing anybody of anything. <clears throat> so treatment, yeah, treatment, boy, yeah, that's a lot of money there in treatment. So, okay, Dave, it has been absolutely wonderful to talk to you. you. It's like, oh. yeah, I'm on overload right now. I was a little, little but, over the place, but um, again, on the no, app, everything's organized no, no, no. there. All the frequently asked questions. No, your, your presentation was great and it's excellent. It was just so like, because I, you know, it, you have to understand that this, this, this is like, like at the a basis of, our existence of how we've been conditioned to believe our world exists all right i got it's like this is like the found when you shift the foundations and everything above it goes you know rattles around as well <laughs> Marlene, so till next time yes well, before we go in um yes. when you made your reservation with me that you mm -hmm. were asked the question do you think the earth is flat a spinning globe or something else and you checked off a spinning globe i do I do. I, I'm not going to lie. I, so I'm you, a globey. So, I'm so a globey. You, th you think the earth is a spinning globe. So let me ask you a question. Is that a religious thing or a science no. thing? No. No, it's a science thing. Okay. I, so, I so I, you let me know ask you a question. I'm... Let me ask you a question. Yes. Can you give me one scientific proof that the earth is a globe? And if you can't, tell you what. it's a religion. Have you put it? Well, you know what? I mm, how's this? No, I how's this? I don't. I I base it on exactly what you described that we're given all this information based on science that this is you know from what the fifteen hundreds and the words et cetera et cetera is not science to say science right. you have to show me the science so. Show me one proof that the Earth is a globe. One scientific fact. Well, now that you've did that, that anything that I could dig up no. is proof that basically well, you're going to tell well, me that's a balloon. Well, no, I'm, but, I'm, but, but I'm not going to just tell you. You have to verify the stuff. But here's the thing: no, there is no scientific proof the Earth is a globe. There is zero. Right. There's, there's no tons of proof tell you? that it's a level Shh. horizontal plane. Right. There's short of how can I say it being able to go in a rocket or some, some, something that would give you that perspective. Because remember, it would be like impossible 
for me to say, hey, I've got definitive proof one way or the other, as far as that, that you could say, this is what it is. I do it just like everybody else. But but here's you the thing, know, you don't I'm, need I'm to normal. leave the earth to prove it's not a globe. Because, you know, when you do the actual calculations, like, you know, they say we can see Polaris 433 light years away, where the truth is we couldn't see it at two light days away. Okay, or, or 20 light days, mm -hmm. or whatever it is. It's, it's, these things are provable here from Earth. We can see too far, water lays flat, right? You can't have high pressure next to low pressure without a container. Watch emergency landings. We didn't even get into Southern flights, okay? Watch the, the, the flight routes of these Southern flights. They make no sense on a globe, but they make perfect sense on a, on a, on a flat Earth, right? Okay. Globe, you'd have to have symmetry six months apart and at equal uh, Northern and Southern latitudes, but there's right. not. It's absolutely not. At 60 degrees south, there's no life. There's nothing. Okay. At 85 okay. degrees north, which is mm -hmm. way worse. Right. Plants, people, animals, everything. Okay. Really? Yeah. All right. So that leads to a point to a flat earth. There's an overwhelming abundance of evidence that we're on a flat level plane. There's zero evidence and actual proof that we're not on a globe. You can't have a high pressure system floating in a space vacuum. It's scientifically impossible. Okay. But when you, you're never taught about that stuff, you're never taught, well, what no. holds the air down? Gravity. Oh, gravity holds cruise ships upside down, you know, the trillions and tons of ocean on an outside of a spinning ball adjacent to a void of no pressure. That is impossible. You can't reproduce that anywhere in a lab and in, in nature. Right. But the globies will be like, oh, you know, the gravity, you got nothing. Globe belief is a religion until you come up with one scientific proof and you're not no. going to be able to no no i you know i don't know to me religion is tied into spirituality yeah, and it's uh, beyond religion whether it, it you know globe, which, globe by the way is faith faith is belief no. in something that you can't prove okay so right. you have faith in the religion of the globe but you can't prove no. it you have no proof but no Oh, well, not, not after this conversation. It's it's like, okay, that's what I'm saying. It's like, that's, that. I, I mean, I've got smoke coming out of my ears because you have to understand a lot of these things that's like, for lack of a better word, you take it for granted because it's spoon fed to us yeah. in school. And it's hard know. to let all that go. Marlene, Absolutely it is. Marlene, let it go. If I was there in the room with you, I'd slap you right now just to help you. I'd be like, okay. <laughs> no, it, it, and you know what? But I do. I, I, I give myself where credit where credit is due. I do have an open mind. I'm and glad I you have an open think, mind. Oh, but I have to give myself the, I don't, I don't listen, automatically say, no, I, that's not I'll, possible. I'll because... congratulate you. You did a great job listening, asking questions. But at the end, you lost a couple points when you said, well, I still believe in the globe, but I can't tell you why. Here's the I thing. Don't know. You're allowed to believe in the globe, but you have to admit. You know what? Religion. Wouldn't it be strange if somebody, after a lifetime of believing something like that exists, to say, "Oh, okay, I don't." I I would be lying to you. I'd be lying to you if I told That's, you right now. Oh, yes, absolutely. No, no, I don't. Earth, but, nah, very good. I don't want you to, to do me. That. It'd be like. But I want you to realize you know, it's like your your belief in the globe is a religious one because that's the definition no. of a religion. There's no science. There's just faith. And you can't even name the reason why you believe it. It's faith. It's the biggest religion ever. You are well, you know faith, what? It's, faith it's globy. Okay. But well, you know what? Because when we, let's say when you're a kid, when you're a child, when you go to school, you know, they don't teach this in religion. They teach this part in a science class. Well, they want okay. you believing in one or the other. They want you believing in a religion or believing in the religion of science. Either way, they've got right. your mind trapped. So it's they, like, they, they don't freak you know, out. you're, they don't, this is not taught like a, you know, and how can I say it? When you're taught this, they don't say, we want you to believe this just on our words. You know, you're given pictures and diagrams and the earth and circumference and the equator. You know, in other words, and as a child, you're like, okay. How did they get the circumference of the equator? Proof. How did they get the radius of the earth? We don't have time to get into it, but it's all made up. It's all nonsense. Right, it's but. Total nonsense. But so, what I'm saying is when they present to you and you're a kid and you're like, okay, you're showing me proof that this you're, is. You're not, the they're not showing you proof. They're showing you nonsense, pseudoscience, and you're believing it as proof because the guy in a bow tie yes, lies told a, you. Okay. Yeah, a failed comedian a told you. You're a kid, you'll oh, believe no. anything because you believe authority. Of course. Hey, the, white, the power of, of the white lab coat, okay? That's the of power course, of the white absolutely. lab coat and the bow tie, okay? 
failed comedian, Bill Nye, the lying guy with the bow tie. He's the one that told yeah, you Bill. the earth was round and boats go over the curve. Okay. Sure. Yeah. You can't that's, zoom that's, in. You know, I remember when the they curve. were saying, oh, do you, do you remember those sailors, Columbus, that they thought that they would fall off the edge of the earth and be eaten, devoured by sea monsters? I remember. You know that the Lincoln oh, Memorial that. in Washington, D.C. was here before Columbus got here? Okay. No. Yeah. How's that? I'm the improbable dreamer on Instagram. Start there. Okay, yeah, you got yeah, it. Yeah. You got right. it. Just remember, you're in a religion. You're in a cult, actually. No, the globe no, cult. No. You're a cultist. You don't even know it. That's no, no. What is, what is, <laughs> Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Let, let me go. When someone's in a okay. cult and you tell them they're in yes. a cult, what do they say? They say, no, 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 I'm not. Well, Please. you know what? Because Marlene, you're in a cult. You, no. I'm See? Not, believe me, I'm not. No, I'm. I'm the least cultish person that there is. No, really. What seriously. does a person in a cult say when you tell them they're in a cult? No, you know what? No, a, <laughs> no. The person in the cult doesn't even listen to anybody else that it proposes anything that contrary to their beliefs. All right. They don't even entertain it. They don't listen right. to it. They're like, no, 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 no. No, on the contrary, I have an open mind. But again, it would be strange if. This is something that you've learned as a child. So it means I've had, without giving decades of this belief, for me to say, oh, yeah, I'd be like, okay, I have to think about this. I do. This is, let me tell you, this is a lot to wrap your head around. <laughs> a lot. Absolutely. Because it's, uh, but the tr the thing is that that's where exploration into those uncharted beliefs, that's how it starts. When you stop a minute, you say, I have to think about this. Arlene, get all the right. app and watch the daily video each day where you have your breakfast. That's all. Just watch the one video. One video a day. Okay. Yeah. And um, and don't believe any, don't believe anything. Just watch No, it. I've got it. I, I even wrote it here. I am the improbable and, dreamer. Yep. I wanted that one. Uh the the Iron Republic. That's another one. All right. I gotta look at that. Yeah. Yep. I've been taking and, notes. And um and watch the daily video each day. And at the uh, at, you know, in a couple of weeks, you'll call me back and you'll be like, Dave, I hate you. My my friends think I'm crazy. Okay. And I'll be saying, well, my family disowned me. That's but, right. Okay. It happens. It happens. <laughs> I, bet, it happens. I bet it does. It's all right. All right. Thank, Thank you, you, Marlene. Thanks so much. It was great. Bye bye. Bye bye. Are you a blue dot? Those questioning where we live are not just here, they are everywhere. Of course this info is hidden from you, but the app shows you that no matter where you go, you aren't alone. We are everywhere and we are growing. Find your tribe today.